Mike here for New Def Gaming, everyone. Welcome to Lost Vault. We are doing a first listen on a brand new game, another RPG for the blind and visually diverse. Lost Vault is a idle type of RPG game with some pretty significantly advanced AAA rated features. It is accessible. I'm gonna also talk about the features that could make it even more accessible. I'm also going to go over several of the menus and do a bit of an early tutorial of Lost Vault. I'm gonna be making a couple of mistakes as I describe some of the features, so feel free to make corrections in the comments. And as always, remember to refer your comments to the general audience of individuals who will be coming to the comments to get information. Usually, I've already done much more research by the time these videos are uploaded to YouTube. So definitely, your tips are much more useful if you make them toward the general audience of listeners. So on with Lost Vault, here we go. So first of all, I want to say the game itself is really interesting because when I first opened it up, I couldn't exactly figure out what I was exactly doing, whether or not it was working, whether or not I had done anything correct. So I want to warn you, first of all, to be careful not to give up on it right away because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you first open up the app. So I'm going to go through a little bit of what you need to do. So when you first open up the app, you're going to get in touch with these. You're going to be having a chance to put your name in. And I didn't exactly remember the entire process for starting to play the app, but it's relatively easy. It's accessible. Your keyboards will work with this. I do not yet know if your Braille displays will work with this particular app. If you do know about that, please leave a comment and say Braille displays do work and what model Braille display you use so we can let other individuals who are blind and visually diverse know what apps work with this. All right. I also want to apologize. This app is very, very dark, so it's mostly black writing. Um, everything I do on my channel is completely accessible for the blind, and for the blind and visually impaired, visually diverse. So there's really no visuals on this channel. I make every one of my reviews based on having blindness not on the visual diverse spectrum. As you know, blindness is a spectrum, but I rate my videos on having no sight whatsoever. It keeps it even for everyone who's using the app. If you are able to access certain features because you do have a different vision spectrum, just understand that I do my video reviews based on the visual spectrum of having absolutely no sight. That's no light perception, that's no visual perception, that's no image resolution or perception of any kind. All right, so we have five main tabs on the bottom. I'm gonna go over them and talk a little bit about what each one of them do. Items, tab two of six, selected, three survivor, tab one of six. All right, this is the first survivor. The survivor tab is most likely the best, you can most likely refer to this as just you you the character this is your character the items you're wearing things like that your level your attributes i'm going to talk about how you can also purchase and increase your attributes you get things like rewards and badges there's all kinds of really cool things related to the survivor tab items tattoo of six the second tab are items very much self-explanatory these are all of the items that you have in the game. Shelter, tab three of six, image, shelter. Shelter is really interesting. This is more of the builder part of this particular game. This game is a little bit in between RPG and idle RPG, but also in between builder RPG. So our RPG builder would be better. Explore, tab four of six. The Explore is the open world part of this game, which is so spectacular, which is one of my favorite features. And it is the one that requires the most explanation. Tribe, tab five of six. Tribes is your own way of creating your own tribe. With your tribe, you can invite other people to play along with you and unlock other features. 
I'll also be talking about which one of these I have used so far. I've done as much practice with this particular game as possible. I think I spent about two hours and a half working on it prior to recording this video, trying to understand some of the more advanced features. Again, if you have more tips to offer, please refer to our general audience to let them know what exactly you've learned. Please use more words, not less when explaining features. Also, there is a site that is dedicated to this. It even has access to Discord, so you can even have chat. I'll be talking about more of that as I go through each one of the tabs. Rank, tab six of six. You can also rank yourself globally, which is spectacular. Rank, tab six right, of six. Now that we've gone through all six of the tabs in just a general sense, let's go through the individual tabs and talk about each of the features. You can use this as a bit of a tutorial for yourself when you're beginning to play Lost Vault. Items, tab two of six, selected. Three survivor, selected. Double Three tab survivor. on tab tabs. one of six. You're going to hear a number at the top of each screen. This is typically your money and your resources. Also, by the way, the sounds you're hearing are from RPG Fantasy Worlds. It is a great app. Pick it up in the App Store and you will find the description for RPG Fantasy Worlds in most of my videos. In this particular video, you will find the place to locate Lost Vault in the description below. As always, on my first listens, if you want to find the game in the iOS App Store, which are the only places I'm rating these games for, you will always find where the, to get the link to the particular app in my description below. I try to remove all my usual social media stuff from the descriptions when I'm doing a first listen. I want you to be able to find the games really easy, and I try to make my descriptions as succinct as possible. All right, let's start at the top. All your typical voiceover gestures will work. Experiment. I've found that the line by line navigation is especially effective. Headings do work, but you cannot headings down if there are no headings. You will get the typical error message, but headings do work. So that's a great thing. Also, vertical navigation will work, though I'm not exactly sure how I can characterize exactly where the vertical navigation will jump you to. Usually, vertical navigation is great for grid-based games and apps. So in this particular app, it could move you to a number of different places. I don't have the exact place the vertical navigation will jump you to, but experiment on your own to see how best it suits you. Uh, word by words work, line by line works, character by character works. Everything pretty much works. Voiceover is completely functional here. Four finger tap top, four finger tap bottom works. I'm gonna do a quick two finger swipe down. Selected, three survivor, <clears throat> tab one of six. Items, tab two of six. Shelter, tab three of six. Image, explore, tab four of six. Tribe, tab five of six. Rank, tab six of six. All right, two finger swipe down did not go through the particular tab I'm on. But as you can hear, two fingers swipe down does work. Let's see if I can get it to read the entire page. Health, 214. Selected, three survivor, tab one of six. Selected, three survivor, now tab one of six. Now I'm on survivor tab. You want to listen for that survivor tab. Make sure that it is selected. The buttons are clear, clearly labeled. There are buttons that are not clearly labeled. So be aware of that. If you hear a silent button, a button that sounds like click, but you don't hear anything, do some experimentation on your own and double tap it. It will usually bring up a menu or an, a text field that can be interacted with. Sometimes it will bring up help information. It will bring up info. It will bring up information about the item that you are listening to. So experiment a lot on your own. You'll find that there are several buttons that are hidden. I'm gonna to try to talk about a few of them. All right, so now we're on tab one. Let's go through it. Items, tab two of six. Quest, journal, private, experience, level two, mage, nudith gaming, settings, button, nudith game, set, rewards, badges, selected, my, res my resources, cash, 392 All bottle right. cap, The 18. first thing you're going to hear is your, it's called my resources. So resources are typical in most games like this, though this has a really cool RPG builder vibe to it. I'm going to turn it on line by not line navigation, which will make this a little easier. Vertical navigate characters, words, lines, my resources. As you can hear, line by line navigation is usually does not work in a lot of apps. Works well here. Cash, 392. Cash is something you get in this game. Early on, it's really hard to come by. Bottle cap, 18. Bottle cap is the extra kind of currency 
So it's a very special currency. It's a very valuable currency. You're definitely going to want to stockpile on that. Selected. Character. Button. And now I can't go by line by line because I've moved to a new field. So... My resource. Selected. Character. Character. Button. Badges. Three. Button. Badges are special things you get for doing things within the game. I haven't fully unlocked how to use them all. I haven't fully, I don't fully understand why you receive them, but periodically you will receive badges and badges are really cool to play around with. They offer improvements to your character. I do not know exactly how they integrate with your statistics, but I'm learning little by little. If I do happen to do a Let's Play series of this, I'll try to explain more of these features. Badges, three. Rewards, button. Rewards are great. You get rewards for doing lots of different things, lots of cool things. It's really fun. Settings, button. Settings work really well. Pop into the settings. You can adjust things that you need to do. Let me give you a quick peek inside. Now My we're resources. inside Cash. of 392 settings. Bottle cap. 18. Now, keep in mind, you can also two-finger tap the screen to make voiceover be quiet um, or to be silent. The great thing about this particular game is that you can always go from the top of the screen and walk through the entire page to find out where everything is. However, that feature also makes it a little bit slow because you're going to have to find where they've dropped you. Now, one of the things the developer could do to alleviate this is to make sure that when we activate a new tab or a new feature that we've double tapped on the button that we are exactly at that point but here's the problem when you touch your finger on the screen voiceover is going to bring you to wherever voiceover is going to bring you to so if we four finger tap the top you see we're going to hear resources again my resources cash there you go 92 bottle cap but 18. really we're not there that's just a static amount of information that sits at the top of the app. What we really want to hear is what are the new options available for settings. Selected, character, badges, th rewards, close, settings, heading. And there you go. You hear the settings, you hear settings, headings, and you can interact with it with the headings button, the headings on your rotor. Switch character. You can switch characters. And I'm going to quickly show you that headings works. Words, speaking rate, volume, audio docket, sounds, headings. Settings. Heading. And as you can hear, I swiped up once. I'll swipe down, and once you hear, there's going to be an error message. Heading not found. Heading not found because there are no headings below. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're using headings, if there are no headings below the headings you're on, you will not get a heading. Now, I would offer to the developer, you could put more headings. It's always great for making games that are blind and visually impaired accessible or blind and visually diverse accessible that you make it so that there are more headings which will allow people to freely move from different parts of each one of the tabs, pages, or whatever you're working on. All right, so as you can hear, headings works. Switch character. You can switch characters, so you can play multiple characters. This is a great feature. Change language. Image. You can change Credit language. Card. Great Black. feature. Night also, change language. there are images that will pop up. I do believe you can turn off images in your settings. Please refer to your user guide information. Please refer to any of your training programs that will teach you some of these methods. I am not an instructor, so I do not have the ability to show you every single voiceover trick, every single iOS feature and trick. Please, there are a lot of assistant technology experts that can teach you these things. I am not an expert in those fields. I'll try to offer you as many tips and tricks as I can as we go. Flag. Image. Logo other. Night sky. Now, flag. I don't know if flag is your own country you can select. Avatar. Image. Logo other. There's an Night avatar, sky. avatar here, avatar. which sounds really cool. I will experiment with that in the future. Probably when I do my second listen, I'll make some more additions and some more changes because I'm very excited about this game. Change name. New Deep Gaming. My name, of course, is there. New Deaf Gaming. N-E-W-D-E-A-T-H. Space. Second word. Capital G A M I N G. So we can name ourselves, which is spectacular. I love games that I can name myself. It gives me that sense of personalization. Chat with Discord button. You can chat with Discord, which is spectacular. I haven't tried it yet, but it sounds awesome. This will really benefit people who want to spend time talking while playing. 
Join the Discord community to ask questions or simply chat with other players. There you go. Tutorial. Switch button. On. Tutorial can be Double turned to off setting. or on. I would have to say the tutorial could use a little bit of work in where it's placed on the screen. However, it works just fine. It can be turned off. It can be skipped. However, when you skip it, it doesn't exactly explain that it's turning it off, but it does give you the option not to turn it off even when you've activated that. I'd like to have anything that does an overlay. A tutorial in this particular game is a bit of an overlay. I'd like if anything that's an overlay appears more at the top so that we can quickly dismiss it, turn it off, interact with it, and adjust it. It would be great if we could adjust things easier, not harder. Explanation icons. Switch button. On. Explanation Double tap icons, to toggle setting. those can be turned off and on. I do not know what those are. I will experiment with that and get back with you. Full screen mode, switch button, on. Full screen Double tap mode, to toggle setting. I'm not sure what that means, but I will get back with you once I've discovered what exactly that does. Delete account. And of course you can delete your account, which is useful if you're done. You are playing Lost Vault version 1.0.302. There's a version. Licenses. There's a licenses. Privacy policy. There's a privacy policies. Terms of service. Terms of service. Contact support. Contact support. Everything's accessible here. Everything's available here. Credits. Credits are there. Selected. Three survivor. Tab one of six. All right, and that is it. When you want to get out of a particular menu, you're going to want to click the close. Now the close button could be a little firmer, a little more solid. It needs a tiny bit more panache on it, but you can get out of it by finding it. It is accessible. The button is labeled. Join the Discord community to chat, cha app, change language, switch care, settings, settings, heading, switch care, settings, close, button. There it is, close button. It's got a slight delay when you hear it, but it isn't a big deal. Super easy to get out of. Boom. My resources. Cash. 392 that was my bottle resources. cap. Selected. Character. B badges. Three. Rewards. Settings. Button. Nudith Gaming. Mage. There's my class. This game has classes, which is spectacular. Level two. You have levels, which is great. Experience. 7.14%. Now, I love to turn the levels into a number, but in a way, this is more convenient because you know when you're moving toward getting 100%. I would love if it added more sounds when you level up. Knowing that you've leveled up and getting a little fanfare is pretty much accepted throughout most gaming communities. I would really love if this game would offer us a little bit of sound when you do level up. You do receive significant rewards for leveling up and that's a great thing. And I want to throw major kudos out uh, to Lost Vaults developers for doing that. Private messages. Button. I will also list developer in the description. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Experience, private messages, button. You can make private messages, which is great, especially if, you know, there's that favorite kitten or dog you want to send a private little message to. <laughs> so yes, you can send a private message to your friend or a family member or someone that you just met. Journal, button. You have a journal here, which includes your most recent activity within the game. Quest. You can even get quests, which is great. Quests are awesome. Explore the wastelands. I am currently exploring the wastelands. I'll talk a little bit about how you can make these activate because when you first play this game, it's going to be a little difficult to understand how to start playing. That's where the tutorial in this game needs a little bit more assistance. It needs to be a little bit more directive. It needs to drag us a little bit more toward the gameplay part. It needs to teach us a little bit more about what happens. Might I offer to the developers that the initial items you receive in a game are incredibly inexpensive. You might want to offer and give the players a few cheap items so that they can understand how the process of the game works. A more more extensive tutorial would be very useful in this game it would help players understand a little bit more about the progress of play having a tutorial that tells me how to play and the progress of play would be very useful 8 slash 12 as you can hear this is my current number of times that i've been exploring when you get to the 12, that means you've already accomplished everything you need to do. So questing is really easy. You just need to understand how it works. I'm going to get to that particular tab. Reject. Bottle cap. Three. You can, often, you can also reject the quest that you are currently on. It's going to cost you the in-game currency. Attributes. Attributes are a little bit trickier, but these are the typical attributes that you're familiar with that are in most role-playing games. Increase strength. Heading. You can increase your strength by actually spending your money within the game, which is spectacular. So you can level up your power by paying money. Cash, 11. 
So there you go. You hear that cash 11? 12. Cash 11. Increase strength. You Heading. can increase your strength. Cash 11. By spending 11 in cash. You just double tap that field and you will increase your strength. You'll be taken to a menu that is invisible. It's going to pop up on the screen. So be aware of pop-ups. It would be really great if pop-ups could work like normal pop-ups. We would hear them. We could dismiss them. We'd also hear a little button that would pop up. I am not against pop-up noises. I think pop-up noises are very useful, especially if we can turn them off or on, especially if we can add cute sounds to them. A very mellow, chill sound like a bloop could be added to pop-up menus. Let us know that we're doing it and also include a tutorial that tells us what those pop-up sounds are. 12. 12. So here are all the things that you can do. So on these attributes, when you pay for an attribute, you have to confirm the attribute. Once you confirm the attribute, you'll now have the new attribute. The cost to increase that attribute goes up systematically. The set amount, I don't know. A tutorial for that would be useful, but it isn't totally necessary. Armor, 78. You have armor, that's an attribute. Increase agility, heading. You have agility. Now each one of these attributes improves a certain part of your abilities, okay? So if you improve your strength, you increase your armor. Armor, set 12. Armor, 70, increase agility, heading. Now if you increase agility, you're also gonna improve something. Cash, 14. And as you can hear, I haven't been I've been improving my agility. It doesn't start off at these numbers. Each class has a different set of attributes where they are stronger or weaker in. 16. 16. Dodge, 1.18%. And as you can hear, when you improve your agility, you improve your dodge rate. Increase intelligence. Heading. If you increase your intelligence, you're also going to get benefits. Cash, 13. I've already increased mine a few times. I'm a wizard, so I assume that I'm going to need to have high intelligence. 15. I've got that up to 15. 15. Damage, 48. Why does it list it twice? I do not know. Those are some of the little accessibility features that I will little by little figure out. Every game has a few quirks. They don't stop you from enjoying it. They're just going to be a little problematic for your ears to hear. As blind folks, we tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to audio cues as I am, speaking for myself. I tend to be a perfectionist about sound. I tend to want, I tend to not want to have any sounds that don't belong. I tend to not want any sounds that detract me or distract me. I tend to not want sounds or extra numbers and figures that don't tell me important information. Especially, I do not like sounds and numbers and information that are not explained and clearly labeled, that are not explained in tutorials. Tutorials and clear explanations are our best friend as blind and visually diverse players of games. Magic Armor, 38. As you can hear, my armor, my magic armor increases by my intelligence. Increase endurance, heading. If you increase your endurance, you increase your hit points. Cash, 13. 14, 14, health, 241. There you go. Also, there are some other features like adding slots. And I do believe when you add slots, that could increase the number of times that you can increase them or give yourself higher attributes in that slots. I'm still learning this. I have a long way to go. Increase luck, heading. Luck is going to increase your critical strike chance. Cash, 11, 11, 11. Critical hit, 112.80%. Okay, 112.80% is a little hard to understand. I do believe that's the amount of damage you do with a crit. So if you critically strike, you'll do 101 more damage. Again, I will verify all this information and in future listens, I will let you know everything that I've discovered. Critical hit chance, 0.82%. And there's my critical hit chance. Now, we're gonna get into some more esoteric items that you can increase, but they're nonetheless cool and varied, and I love that aspect. Double hit, 0.67%. You can do double hits, which is amazing. I've never, I've really only experienced double hits in certain tabletop games. Lifesteal, 0%. Lifesteal, I've experienced that in a couple games. Reflect damage, 0%. Reflect damage, that's a very similar feature to a couple other games I've played, like Future Arena, which does have reflect damage. Extra XP, 0%. Extra XP, that's a really cool feature. I don't think I've ever been played any games that had extra XP. There's a couple MMORPGs that have that feature when you wear certain 
heritage armor, special armors that you purchase and that you level up will give your character more experience points. I do believe in some of the older versions. I don't know if any of the current armors in most MMORPGs are going to give you experience gains. But this is great that you can actually find equipment that will increase your experience. I'm only very concerned that does this mean that I can transfer my equipment to my other characters? There are some games that do offer you, like Future Arena does let you transfer equipment to your other characters on a limited basis. That's a great feature. I do hope that's present here. Extra cash, 0%. This feature is another feature I've seen in other games. Nudith Gaming. There's a, a little bit of a extra click, cash, click. Extra XP, There's a little bit of a click, click, click feature, like an audio ducking kind of sound. It sounds like those are silent you could double tap them they won't do anything those are some of the things that can be removed when this game is a little bit more streamlined for the blind and visually impaired but they don't definitely hurt the game they just distract you a tiny bit not a big deal extra cash zero nudith gaming a for nudith gaming a force of good has come to this world i hope to increase this game's accessibility ease of interface use and to grow its audience on nudith gaming thank you to the devs for making this game accessible for the blind there's my message to the devs. Yes, you can make your own mission statement, which is spectacular. This is super great. Now, I don't know if everyone can hear this. Of course, all of you have heard it now. I don't know if anybody taking a look at your profile will hear this very special message, but it was great and it was very large. I was able to put, I think, a 500 word message or 500 character message uh don't quote me i think it's 500 characters but it was spectacular that's a really great feature global chat button you have global chat which is in-game chat in addition to the discord this means you are not isolated from anybody else if only more devs made it so that you could communicate with people like this selected three survivor tab one of six all right so that's it for the survivor tab let's go to the next tab items tab two of six we're gonna Getting not found oops Shelter, tab three of six, items, tab two of six. Now we've activated by double tapping. We're now on the item. We're gonna four finger tap the top. My resources, Let's cash, four finger 392 tap the bottom cap, to see if 18 that scraps, works. Rank, tab six of six, tried, tab five, explore, tab yeah, four of six. Work. Four finger tap the bottom works. My resources, four cash, finger tap 392 the top bottles. works. Selected, items, workshop, button. All right. Selected, my, re my, re my resources, You're gonna hear cash, my resources first. Selected, items, button. Now that we're on items, and we're going to continue a little bit more. My time is up. I had originally planned on doing maybe about a 25-minute um, overview of this game. First, listen, we're going to go a little bit farther, see if we can complete all the tabs, and we're going to stop right there. All right, because I wanted to get this all out there as much as I can in this first listen, so that if I do do a Let's Play of this particular game, we could just dispense with all the instructional information and initial tutorial information. Workshop. Button. So the workshop is great. You can go into the workshop. You can break down items. And it's completely accessible. I tried it out today. Selected. Items. But workshop. Shop. Button. The shop is great. You can buy very special items. I wouldn't advise you to, though. It's pretty easy just to find it when you explore. Equip. You can equip items. Pendant. So these are the particular items you get. You can get a pendant. Common peasant hat image these are the current items i have equipped i have a common peasant hat i found that from adventuring and i equipped it it was really easy locked required star star 30 star star level image there LBL. are some things that are locked i would like to work on those and remove some of that unnecessary information that'd be great if we can turn off some of the unnecessary image information maybe it would be a click box for those who are visually diverse and able to use visual cues but for those of us who are totally using no visual cues and just audio cues it would be great if we could remove some of the unnecessary verbal information from voiceover common apprentice broom image and i just got this common apprentice broom i love the names it seems like this is going to be a game that's going to have lots of variety, lots of creativity, lots of cool names for weapons. The weapons are really easy to understand. You can use your own imagination to kind of think about it. This makes me feel like I'm a kind of wizard or something because I've got a broom. I don't know if they planned it that way. I wonder if all the weapons are going to be characterized for your particular class. I don't know. I'll be finding out in the weeks to come. Common beggar robe, image. I've got a common beggar robe. I found that when I was exploring the wastelands. Common wooden bracer, image. This is for your hands. So there's so many different equipment slots. Ring. You have a ring. I haven't found any rings yet. Pants. 
Um, and I think my microphone might be bumping a little bit against my chin, so sorry about that. What happens a lot is um, when I'm doing these recordings, my chin dips down a little bit low, and because I have my phone connected to my wireless mics, so sorry if my chin is bumping the microphone a little bit. I don't mean for it to do that, so. Common peasant shoes, image. Common peasant shoes, typically these are your boots. Definitely double tap on those and you'll get to hear exactly what they are. This game is very good with its information. It provides you these little information things that you can double tap on. They'll immediately explain to you whatever the equipment is. Backpack. Backpack is gonna be how much you can carry when you're exploring. One slash eight. And you hear that one slash eight, that means I have one item in my backpack out of a possible max of eight. Yes, you will have to pay to increase your backpack size. This game does have things that you can purchase, so be aware of that. There are packages you can purchase, so if those are kind of going to be a difficulty, I'm really not a proponent of things that are loot boxes. I do not believe in stuff like that. It can promote people to have unhealthy like behaviors, like doing things like gambling to get the best loot boxes. I am very much not a proponent of loot boxes. I don't believe in them. I don't believe, believe they belong in games. I'm very strong believer that you should earn the items you find. I'm a very strong believer and proponent of supporting devs. So if I can support a dev by paying for stuff that offers me lots of cool stuff, I will do that. That is fair. The devs have to eat. Devs have to pay for their kids' education. Devs have to keep the lights and oil and the lamps and stuff like that. So definitely, I'm a huge supporter of devs. I'm devs' best friends. But when it comes to things like loot boxes, paying for special packages, I'm not a big fan of those. I believe there's better ways for devs to get funds, but that doesn't mean that's what's going on here. I'm just saying, if you are a person that is triggered by the ability to upgrade yourself by buying packages that have random loot inside of them. Be careful with that. I always want to warn you in advance about that. Definitely be careful with your hard-earned money. Common beggar robe. Image. That's my robe. Chests. Uh, chest. Common chest. Image. Yes. Unlock slot. Button. You can unlock slots, which are really great. You can experiment with that on your own. It's pretty easy, pretty simplistic, pretty well laid out plan to interact with those and unlock those. Unlock slot. Button. You basically double tap them. You'll be asked to spend your basically in-game money or currency. So that's super cool. That's super fair. That means that if I just work really hard and I play a lot, I'll be able to spend my in-game money to unlock slots in my equipment. I think that's spectacular. I really like when games let me work hard in the game to unlock features for my character. Unlock slot, button, lock, required 30 level, image. Of Headphones. course, this is Inclores. another great feature. Required 30 level, 20. You need to go up in level to unlock certain slots, which is great. Three survivor, tab one of six. All right, so that's it. We've gotten out of this tab. Let's go to the next tab. Shelter, tab three of six, image. Now, once you get to the shelter, shelter tab, this is more like building buildings and stuff. It's really awesome. It requires a lot of money, so you're going to have to do a lot of hunting around. You're going to have to do a lot of exploring, but you also have to wait for your resources to build up to do extensive exploring. Exploring in this game requires water, but I'm going to get into that in a second. But first, let's talk. Let's go through the tab for shelter. So four finger tap the My top. resources, cash, selected, shelter, button. Now you hear sh shelters. Raids, button. Select raids, button. You can raid. So double tap these features. They're really interesting. It requires you to reach certain levels to do things like raid. Invasion, button. Invasions are also fun. It allows you and other groups to invade territories. I think that's a spectacular feature, a group feature that allows you to work with others to do more difficult tasks. These are great features and they're all accessible so far. Headquarter increases resources capacity and allows to upgrade the rest of the shelter. All right, Image. it'd be Credit great card. if we had a little increases separation, a little separation in some of these sections would be great, but it's not a big deal. These are the buildings. It'd be nice if we knew when we were getting to buildings, but it's self-explanatory. Just read everything. 
Like I said, line by line, word by word, character by character navigation, all work including headings and vertical navigation. Now, you're going to want to increase your headquarters. It costs money, but once you do, it increases the capacities of all the rest of your buildings. This is the RPG builder type. The, you know, the builder RPG, RPG builder. You can go back and forth either way. This is one of my favorite features. I love building up my camp. I love building up my shelter. So this is a great feature. This is one of the buildings you can build. Build, button, show, button. The show feature allows you to listen to all statistics of the individual building. Build, button, show, The build, build button, button, once that's active and not dimmed out, that means that you can build. So that's another great feature. It would be kind of good if it had maybe a little bit more verbiage. Maybe it could say build, available, build now, so we know that we can build it. I always want to know what I'm going to do before I do it. What I love about this game, Lost Vault, it does usually confirm or ask you to confirm what you want to do. So before you spend your hard earned money and currency, it usually does ask you if that's exactly what you want to do. That's very nice, very streamlined, very enhanced. I want to thank the devs for that. Show button info. Info is your pretty much your tool tips. You're going to want to use that. Please, everything that you hear, use the info on it first. Double tap that info button. Find out everything about every single thing before you use it. Refinery produces fuel required by shelter upgrades. Image, night All sky, right. painting, screenshot. Some Ref of the information is gonna rattle on. That might be because the images are being connected verbally and read by voiceover as also are being read the information about me swiping and I'm swiping to the right. So yes, you're getting a lot of information all at once. Use your line by line navigation it, or just re-listen to it again if it's too much all at once. But these things are easy to understand. There's just no pauses in between them. So pauses could be useful. The dev could drop these down line by line. Again, line by line navigation is great. It's very useful. Build. Dimmed button. As you can hear, this is dimmed, which is great. That tells me I can't build it. It would be great if a feature is dimmed, if maybe a little pop-up was next to it that said unlock at level two, unlock at level four, unlock when you have a refinery up to level two. So we could probably get away with adding a little bit more information when something's dimmed out. Show button. Farm produces food required by shelter upgrades. Image night sky screenshot build dimmed button farms can be built show button water clarifier produces extra water to explore the wastelands image night sky screenshot water now, clarifier I unlock produces this extra myself. water to ex build dimmed button i just unlocked the water clarifier so another thing you can do when you are exploring the world map you can actually unlock buildings which is really awesome show button level three required locked image you also have level requirements for building certain things in certain buildings, so be aware of that. Read all the tool tips. Level 5 required. Lock. Image. Level 8 now, required. Now, you're going to get to a certain point when you're going through a particular tab, you have level 5 required, level 6 required, level 9 required. That means that you can't get access to these particular buildings or items, and I don't know all of them because I haven't fully been playing this game long enough to know what they all are, but you cannot see or hear any of the new items unless you've gotten to the appropriate level lock image level 10 required lock it, level 15 lock it, level 30 required lock lock image level 30 required lock it, three survivor tab one of six all right and that is it you as you can hear i haven't unlocked very many things that's it for tab number three let's go to the next tab explore tab four of six now explore is awesome so the explore tab is the the most confusing and the one that needs the most explanation. So it's four finger tap to top. My resources, cash, you get that. My resources. Selected, wastelands, button. Now I'm currently exploring wastelands. So you have to select the place you want to explore. The problem is there is no button sound. So you have to double tap on the particular place you want to explore. The wastelands is where you're first going to start. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. 
The fighting is done automatically for you, so it's more of an idle kind of RPG. It's just gonna do what you tell it to do. Caravan, button. Caravan is another way of attacking, I do believe. I haven't done much experimentation with that. Vaults, button. I haven't done any experimentation with vaults. Innocent land. Now, this is where, again, a little bit of separation from the top options, from the lower options, could be useful. But yes, this is where I am on the Innocent Lands, which is a nice name. Info. You have info, so you've got these nice tool tips. The last piece of land unaffected by the apocalypse. Image. Mountain, Gotta love sky, those descriptions. Rocks, descriptions are great. I wish, I wish more devs, like the devs of Lost Vault, were around who added descriptions. Descriptions are very underrepresented in most MMOs, most RPGs, most role-playing games for the blind. You need lots of description. It really helps the player feel immersed in the game. Show. Button. Lock. Image. Lock. Image. As you can hear, a lot of features are locked because I'm new to the game. Lock. Image. Lock. Image. Lock. Image. Lock. Image. As I open up more parts of the game, I'm going to unlock more of these expiration points. Lock. Image. I'm going to go back up and I'm going to uh, let you hear what happens lock, 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 when lock, I double lock, tap. Show. Button. The last piece of land unaffected. Info. Info. Innocent land. I'm going to double tap on innocent lands. Innocent land. And that didn't do anything. Again, I, I, there's still a lot I have to learn. Info. Info? No, we don't want info. The last piece of land unaffected by the apocalypse. Image. Mountain. No, show. Button. Lock. Image. Show. Button. Let, I think it's show. My resources. Cash. Yes, 392 there it is. bottle cap. All right. 18 water. When you 180 click slash show, 250 water recovery. Z when you click show, it's going to bring up another little mini map which are basically grid-based or square-based. Depending on your visual diversity, you'll be able to see or not see what it is. I don't use any vision when I make these reviews. It's all about swiping left, right, or using all of my rotor and voiceover functionality. So we're gonna four finger tap at the top. My resources, You're cash, get that 392 resources. bottle caps, selected, wastelands, caravan, button. As you can hear, you have the wastelands, Vaults. caravans, button. caravan, Vaults. Vaults. close, button, innocent land. Heading. And you could close that innocent lands. As you can hear, you always want to get to that headings. So now that you hear it, I've got innocent lands open. The last piece of land unaffected by the apocalypse. District one, progress. Eight there slash 10. we go. Now this is what you're looking and listening out for. You want to hear that district progress. Here's how you find treasure. Now I'm going to have to go through this slowly because it's a little tricky because the buttons to determine that you're exploring to let you explore are a little hard to find. All right. Water 10 button district. The last piece of land unaffected by district one progress. District eight slash one 10. progress eight slash 10. You basically progress one at a time. Water 10 button. The water 10 button is the button that you need to press. Now what they should do is have you say, expend 10 water to progress, expend 10 water to adventure, but they do not tell you that. So you could bypass this many times, not knowing that this is how you progress your adventure. I'm gonna double tap that. Require 10 level. Water, 10. I'm button. going to double tap. Now, when you hear require this, 10 level. require 10 level, it would be better if it said it required 10 water. That's what it should say, but it doesn't tell you that. Locked, image. Locked is another confusing bit of information. Locked, image. Because there's a lot of lock things. So a lot of information kind of bounces around a little bit. Again, these are simple things. These are not the end of the world. These things will be streamlined in the future, I'm sure. This is a very responsible dev. They seem to care a lot about accessibility for the blind. I am not concerned in the least. Lock, required, water, 10, button. Now, once you hear that water button, which is clearly marked, go ahead and double tap it. Water, 10, dim. Okay, you're not going to hear anything. Now, I would offer, we could make a little sound effects Maybe our character chunk, chunk, chunk walking through the ground. Maybe our character could be fighting. Maybe our character could be slashing with whatever weapon they have, depending on what kind of weapon they have. In my case, it's a broom. Maybe it sounds like a whoosh, whoosh, like a broom. Or maybe I'm sword fighting with a broom. So it'd be really great if there were some sound effects when we've activated using our water, or maybe we drink our water and you make random sounds of us exploring different areas. Again, 
If you are blind, sounds are your best friend. They are the most beautiful part of games. When we don't hear sounds, again, it's really tough for us to enjoy the gameplay. And this could provide a lot of replay with more sound. I've seen games with just very minimal graphics and a whole lot of good sounds do extraordinarily well. That behooves all developers to add as much sound as they can reasonably do so in budget for. Require 10 level. Now that we have double tapped that water, there is a small box that will pop up. The box will be visible by you four finger tapping the top. Center of screen. Oh, you can center the screen. So four finger tap center. Lock, image, toady. And that's great that we can four, we can, uh, four finger tap center. Victory. Okay, you're gonna hear this little tick, 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 tick. There's nothing there. You could double tap that and nothing will happen, but keep swiping to your right. Victory. You'll hear victory. Once you hear victory, you know that you've received an outcome. I like to call it an outcome box, which means that you've accomplished something and that's definitely gonna be really important for you to know that you've done something. And here's where you're going to hear what your rewards are. New Deep Gaming, health, 237 slash 241 right level two, image, people. Toady, health, 0 slash 67 Toadie, level 1, now, image, animal, it feels water, really Toadie, weird 56, 0 slash 67. That you hear these people like Toady the animal. I don't know what that means. I don't know whether you beat up an animal, you brought an animal with you. It doesn't say. This could use much more information. Get reward, button. You definitely want to double tap that get reward. My resources, cash, three, selected, wastelands, button. My re get reward, button. Now double tap that get reward. Let's hear what we get. Get reward. Now, once you hit click that get reward, another box will pop up. Now, let's see if we can four finger tap the middle of the screen. Reward. No, it doesn't. I was just experimenting. The four finger tap is not activating any middle of the screen. However, you hear that tick, tick, tick. You'll know that the new box has popped up in the middle of the screen swipe to your right cash 19 reward cash 19 there's your reward i just got 19 cash experience five i got five experience fame four i got four fame which is another type of ranking system currency experience 14.28 percent for and then you get this very strange percentage uh 14 point i'm getting used to it i'm not used to hearing so much information when i do an experience up. It'd be great if we can get rid of these decimal points. Let's just round up or round down. To me, that'd be better. <laughs> Preferably, I'd like to round up, but I really think we can drop that whole 0.28 stuff. I think that's really great when you're rating equipment and armor and those kind of things. But when you're talking about experience, I think when we're doing anything past a decimal point is a big more of a pain than anything else. Close button. Now, once you're done with this, my click close, close button, which is simple, close. well marked, my resources, label button, cash, and you're done. Bottle cap, now I'm going to go back. I'm going to quiet voiceover. I'm going to go back to that particular menu. District one, progress. District one nine slash ten. And as you can hear, I am now gone from eight to nine, and that's it. You're going to progress through all of these this grid-based sector map, and you're gonna uncover treasures and surprises. And once you get those items, you're gonna go back to your items menu and equip them. And when you get more cash, you go to your character menu, you can go do some upgrading to your character statistics. You could go to the shop and disassemble items that you don't need. You could also sell items. You can also upgrade items. You can unlock different things in your armor. This game is fantastic. Other than this, you can check out the tribes. It's pretty self-explanatory. There's really no reason for me to go through that. Check out the ranking. These are very simplistic menus. That's just your overall global ranking. And that's it. This is Lost Vault, a spectacular role-playing game for the blind and visually diverse, visually impaired. This game is awesome. I am exclusively reviewing this game for iOS. I do not know if it's on Android, but definitely you can find the link to this to the iOS store in the description.
definitely tell them that New Def Gaming sent you there. And as usual, if you have very valuable tips for other players of Lost Vault, leave them in the description specifically for the general audience, not just for me. And that will be very appreciated by you. Thank you all very much. I'm looking forward to doing more plays of Lost Vault. I think it's really fun. I think it's a great game that I can add RPG Fantasy World ambience to. I think it's a great game that I can have a little fun and just chill and relax. This is a great idle RPG. It definitely has a lot of potential. And I think with a little bit of tweaking, a little beautification, a little enhancement, a little bit more accessibility, this game is going to sing a beautiful sympathy, symphony and melody that's going to really keep the audiences of people who are blind and visually diverse active in this game. It has a lot to offer. So definitely go pick up Lost Vault in the App Store. And uh, as usual, love yourself, each other, always be kind. And I'll come back again next week, possibly with another first listen on a brand new game from my list of the most accessible games of 2022 or the top accessible games of 2022. If I could ever remember the extremely long playlist titles I have. <laughs> All right, everyone, take care and I'll hear you soon. Bye bye.